Over the past few years, my no-code stack has gone through some serious changes. What I use today looks nothing like what I started with, and every change I made came from hitting real-world problems while building. I started out using a simple all-in-one tools, and they were great for launching quick MVPs. But as my apps got more complex, I needed a stack that could scale, integrate, and actually handle production-level workflows. Today, I'm breaking down how my stack has evolved, what tools I added and why, and I'll show you the most underrated tool I use, the one that makes everything run like magic behind the scenes. If you are a solo founder, a no-code dev, building for clients, or just someone trying to scale beyond MVPs, this stack is for you. Stick around because by the end of this video, you'll know how to build a scalable automated app and the one tool that most people overlook but has become my secret weapon. Like many of you, I started with Bubble. It had everything built in, drag and drop UI, logic, database, even deployment. It was perfect for my first couple of apps. I built a lightweight marketplace and a simple booking tool without writing a single line of code. I remember using this tool for the very first time and being in awe that I can drag and drop various components around as though I'm building a web page but in the end build a fully functioning app without any code. As a software developer in my past life, I was more than impressed by it. Back when I began using Bubble, I felt that the tool was truly ahead of its time. Not only you had a tool that was super easy to use, but it was packing a ton of awesome features and functionality, built-in database, integrated workflows with webhooks and more features. The pros is that it's super fast to get started, no backend to worry about, and leverage the powerful workflows for sending and receiving data. Can you say free webhooks? Just drag and drop your way to building the app of your dreams. But the more I used it, the more I realized how limiting it was because every layer of app development was so tightly bound together, there wasn't a straightforward way to extend it and customize your app. Writing plugins or extensions was unnaturally burdensome. I remember working on one of the plugin building video tutorials and getting so frustrating during the whole process that I couldn't wait to finish the video and move on. Never mind that you couldn't take your code with you. And after Bubble changed the way they charge for hosting and running your apps, it made less sense to build your apps on their platform. Vendor lock-in was real. Ultimately, Bubble was great for MVPs, but not for growth. Once you needed customization or control, it became a wall, not a launch pad. I also briefly dabbled with Adalo, Glide, and a few others mostly to build mobile apps for clients or quick internal tools. They were great for super simple use cases, but I found myself struggling when it came to things like custom logic, deep linking, or scaling user management. I remember being super proud when I built a working Tinder clone with Adalo. Swiping, user profile, simple chat, it actually worked. But under the hood, it was held together with duct tape and hope. Every time I try to add something slightly advanced, like custom matching logic or even filtering based on proximity, I felt like I was fighting the tool, not building with it. The idea behind Adalo is great, a mobile first drag and drop builder that outputs native apps. But in practice, once you try to extend it beyond the basics, you hit some serious friction. The logic layer is visual, but very linear and limited. The database structure is simple to the point of being restrictive. And the performance just doesn't hold up when your app gets beyond toy size. So the pros are fast setup, nice UI components, native feeling mobile output, and great for showcasing an MVP fast. But if you're building a directory app, a quiz, or even a basic chat app, you can probably get it done in a week. The moment you want more, like conditional logic, multi-step workflows, or anything asynchronous, it gets really hard. You can't build true app logic the way you'd expect. Custom APIs, sort of. Relationships, kind of. Performance, questionable at scale. Ultimately, Adalo and tools like it are fun for fast builds, but break easily when complexity creeps in. They're great for prototyping, not production. And let me know in the comments if you've ever used tools like these and hit the same issues. I'm curious how far you got before outgrowing them. Flutterflow was the first tool that made me feel like I could build something visually and still maintain the power of native apps. I was impressed by it from the get-go and never mind the ability to generate real Flutter code. One of the first things I built with Flutterflow was a dashboard app for managing internal metrics. It connected to Firebase Auth and Firestore. 
and I thought I was building like a pro until I hit my first wall. At the time, Firebase felt like a natural fit. It gave you real-time database updates, easy auth integration, and even functions you could deploy. But those functions, they were not fun. And so the pros of Firebase is fast, real-time, and deeply integrated into Flutterflow. Spinning up an MVP with OAuth and Firestore is quick and satisfying. Over time, however, I started to build more and more complex apps, and Firebase turned out to be surprisingly limiting compared to Superbase, especially when you start needing real control. The querying capabilities in Firestore are very basic and restrictive, making relational logic difficult or impossible without data duplication. You can't do SQL joins or deep filters, and your only option is to work around those limits with weird data structures. And then there's the backend logic. There's no visual logic layer, no native workflow engine, and Firebase functions require writing and deploying code in TypeScript or JavaScript via the CLI with poor debugging tools and awkward development cycles. It felt like I was constantly fighting the platform just to make it do things that should have been very, very simple. Ultimately, Firebase was quick to get going, but lacked control. No SQL, no workflows, and complex backend logic felt bolted on, not built in. Superbase was the backend I had been waiting for. SQL-based, open source, relational with OAuth, and real-time updates. It felt like the spiritual successor to Firebase, but with actual control and transparency. I rebuilt an app I originally had in Firebase, but this time with Superbase, and suddenly things like filtering related records or securing access with roles became clear and simple. So one of my favorite things about Superbase is how easy it is to work with data. So here I am in one of my projects, and if I go to my table editor here, you can see that I have all my tables but I also have views and I can specify the view exactly how I want it, exactly how the app requires it. This is so, so helpful. I have these views and behind these views, I have actually SQL code and I can make it as simple as I want or as complex as I want. And the best part of it all is that I have these tables that are separate. They're separate entities, cities, countries, polls, to do's and then in the views I can mix and match the data to display it exactly how I want and this is one of my absolute favorite things about Superbase. What I loved about Superbase was that it didn't try to be magic. It gave me full SQL access, I could write queries, create joins and use role level security to lock down access. It felt like a real backend because it was. And so the pros of this Flutterflow plus Superbase setup was full Postgres database, SQL querying, RLS, file storage, edge functions, and great performance. It also integrates amazingly well with Flutterflow now. But there was still something missing, a real way to build backend workflows. Firebase gave me authentication and a real-time database but there was no native workflow layer. Sure, I could technically wire things up with Firebase functions or hack together logic with Firestore triggers, but it would always feel clunky. It meant diving into CLI, deploying code manually, and dealing with limited debugging tools. It lacked the elegance and structure of a true backend automation engine. And while Superbase gave me a lot of control and flexibility, I still needed something to run logic and workflows intelligently. I had the data infrastructure, but no way to orchestrate how things moved, connected, or responded to my users. All right, so at this point, I had a front end and a back end, but something was still missing. Now, here's where the story really gets good. This was the moment things really clicked. I had a solid back end, I had a solid front end, a real back end, but no good way to run back end logic and workflows. Zapier wasn't enough. Firebase functions were too painful. Enter BuildShip. I actually remember my first aha moment. I wired up a workflow where when a Superbase record was created, BuildShip would format the data, send an email, ping an external API, and update another table. It felt like magic, but I had full control. So what is BuildShip? Well, BuildShip is a visual backend automation engine. It connects to your database, triggers unchanges, schedule tasks, makes API calls, and branches logic based on conditions. Think of it like Zapier, but designed for developers. And so you get a powerful visual builder, real logic control, great API support, clean debugging, logs, retries, and full integration with Superbase. It's honestly all the pros, and sure, there's a slight learning curve, 
when you're getting started, but the benefits far outweigh. Once you get comfortable, it feels like you've unlocked a professional grade tool that gives you superpowers without the overhead of building your own backend from scratch. And so BuildShip became the brain behind the stack, the thing that quietly makes everything work behind the scenes. In a nutshell, BuildShip is the backend engine every serious app needs, automations, workflows, APIs, all running cleanly in the backend without a single line of server code. Now with Flutterflow on the front, Superbase on the back, and BuildShip running the logic, what could be better? Speed. And that's where Cursor came in. The defining moment was when Flutterflow introduced its Visual Studio Code extension letting me pull my entire app onto my local machine. That was a complete game changer. Now I could open up my real Flutter code inside my ADE, such as Cursor or Visual Studio Code, directly to help finesse my logic and avoid Flutterflow's built-in code editor, which frankly doesn't work half the time. Being able to work locally with AI right inside my coding workflow was a massive productivity boost. I remember trying to write a complicated 3D widget for one of my apps, digging through documentation, piercing together examples, and searching for forums for hours. Then I tried describing what I needed to cursor and it pulled together a clean working solution without breaking a sweat. That one experience saved me hours and gave me a huge sense of what was possible. Cursor is an AI-powered IDE, actually a fork of Visual Studio Code with a built-in assistant designed specifically for developers. It understands your stack, helps with SQL, writes backend logic, and even helps write JSON or Flutter. And it's perfect for writing your Flutter custom code. It's not generic AI, it's dev aware. You can use cursor to help draft queries, policies, logic flows, and functions. It learns your code base. It works inside your ID. It is super smart. Now, of course, you still need to verify everything. It's a helper, not a replacement. And of course, it's not your own senior dev who writes entire apps, debugs them, and ships them to your users. You still need to guide it, iterate, and make decisions but it's a very good one and it saves a ton of time that you'd otherwise be using to familiarize yourself with the code, scour forums, read documentation, and the like. It's the icing on the cake, the thing that makes the whole stack not just powerful, but fast and smooth. So for example, here's a really nice use case where cursor is very, very confused. As you can see on the right-hand side, uh, cursor gets a little stuck here, okay? So it just keeps repeating things and it starts looping uh, because it's not quite sure what, what's happening. It's not quite sure how to proceed. And that happens from time to time as we get more and more um, complex code. And so in a nutshell, Cursor turns dev tasks into conversations. It's not magic, at least not yet, but it's the closest thing to an AI pair programmer who actually gets your entire app and your stack. And so as you can see, my stack has evolved a lot over the years. And to be honest, I'm not entirely sure what the future calls for. Things are moving very, very quickly in the no-code and low-code space. But strangely enough, BuildShip has been the tool that's moved the needle the most. When it comes to creating customer-focused benefits in almost no time, it's BuildShip that unlocked that superpower. Not even Flutterflow, Superbase, or AI. Although Cursor came close with some of the advanced code generation local development workflows I use today, BuildShip was the first tool that truly unlocked the feeling of having an operational team running behind my app 24-7 and doing it without me writing custom code. In fact, I use it for pretty much all my custom Flutterflow app development. Overall, it's not just about stacking tools, it's about unlocking leverage. And right now, this stack, Flutterflow Superbase Build Chip and Cursor, gives me more leverage than I've ever had before. This stack doesn't just save me time, it lets me build like a full team of devs. Now, if you're interested in truly supercharging your app, not just building it, but making it dynamic, responsive, and capable of delivering real value to your users and revenue to your business, then you need a workflow builder that can keep up. BuildShip is hands down the best tool for the job. And if you want to go beyond building apps and start actually creating real, scalable products that run themselves, you need a workflow engine like BuildShip. And that's what my new training, Mastering BuildShip, is all about. 
turning your ideas into systems that deliver value while you sleep. The training is live right now. Check it out using the first link in the description below the video.